Can you sail around the Caribbean during hurricane season? We asked ourselves that question a hundred times when we were back in the UK and when we were in the Med before we sailed over. And the truth is, yes, you can. We've been traveling around Grenada and the islands around Grenada for five and a half months now, and we're nearly at the end of hurricane season. It's been an absolute blast. We've seen some beautiful places. And if I'm honest, we probably wouldn't have spent as long in Grenada if it wasn't for hurricane season, because there's so much to see here in the Caribbean. There's so many islands to visit. So we hope that you've enjoyed the last few episodes where we've been pottering around. And you'll see in this episode as well that we still go visiting places that we haven't been to before. Hello, Gus. We hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget if you uh, if you do enjoy it leave us a comment give us a like and if you want to drop us a question you can send that to cordeliaresv at gmail.com anyway enjoy the video hope you enjoy it we are steve annette and gus and we live on our venus 46 catch we're mad nutty down to earth but most of all real we love this life and we love sharing it with you and we want to continue doing so as far as we can for as long as we can morning guys it's uh, nearly the end of september i can't believe that um a year ago was the start of our atlantic crossing then just leaving tyrell bay in carrier and we're going to go round to we think sparrow bay which isn't too far only a few miles around the coast. Um, we'll probably spend the weekend there. Hello Gus. Why don't you just get right in there? We've got two or three weeks before we need to be back down uh, the bottom of Grenada to go and pick up our cushions. They haven't even started them yet because well, the fabric's not even arrived from the States apparently. Sorry, Steve's just getting out the head sail. We need a bit of food, so we've come round to Hillsborough, um, which is around the other side of Carrier Coo. Look at this, it's just stunning. That is where Cordelia is. So we tied off the dinghy and we've put a kind of stern anchor out to keep it away from underneath the we put a stern anchor on to keep it away from un going underneath the pontoon because it is a bit rough. The steps there leave a little bit to be desired. Each one is moving backwards and forwards and up and down. So, But it's Caribbean style. <laughs> it's lovely. Yeah, it is. Gorgeous, isn't it? Steve, they do well grey tea. <laughs> Just here. Wow, there's a massive crab down there. Oh, there's one just there. Look, can you see? It's gorgeous here. It's stunning. So Johannes, who lives on that boat over there, he, or one of those boats over there, I can see, just where the dinghy's going past now, he was here with his two dogs when we arrived, and he was asleep in this hammock. I mean, how idyllic is that? It's a tiny little island. Look at all those conch shells. And you can see people, the holes in them here, the holes in them here, that means that somebody's actually taken the conch out. I don't think the cooker's any good.
There's a little chair there. And that's his hammock. Johannes's hammock. Isn't it beautiful? It is. Absolutely stunning. A little cave over there with a the troll. There's a cooker over there. It's way, way, way beyond any use, but... The Caribbean coral reefs, whilst beautiful, are in decline with over 50% less coral than in 1970. This is due to plastic, rising sea temperatures and ocean acidification. Conservation projects throughout the Caribbean are focusing on reef restoration. Hard corals that provide hygiene, food and protection for over 25% of the world's fish, fish species are grown in nurseries. These are fast growing corals that can grow up to five to six centimetres a year. Once the nursery corals are established, they are then placed on the seabed next to a reef. When we're snorkeling and swimming around the reefs, we never ever touch them. And when we anchor Cordelia, we always look for a sandy patch, a seabed, so that our chain doesn't destroy the coral. When you see the beauty of the corals, you can understand why conservation areas place buoys for you to use and have a no anchoring policy. So Steve's just had a go at me for, he said that I'm eating an apple wrong. So I start from the top and I go down to the bottom and then I move it around a bit and I start from the top and I go down to the bottom. Hence the reason why, see the top bit is there, it's gone. So I will now, so I'm going down the apple. Steve reckons I ought to go around the middle of it and then around the top and then around the bottom. Like everybody else does in the world. I don't, that don't make any sense to me because then you've got the whole of the apple, wet apple, rubbing up against your hand, whereas I'm eating it down and the only part that is going to touch my hand is when I eventually get around to the other side of the first bit I started at. Make sense? <laughs> Look at that animal. He does that every single meal time. He's, yeah, like, a, uh, he's like a cat. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saving on your washing up. And also, somewhere in the world, you know, like, like burping and farting, in some places it's like the right thing. Licking a plate somewhere in the world. So No, be, there's not. There is nowhere in the world yeah, that licking a plate be, is... There will be, it'll be somebody like the Chinese, okay? It, a sign of appreciation of the meal would be they lick the plate. So I'm like the part of Chinese, if that is it. If somebody knows who the country in the world is that are lickers, drop it in the comments. I'd love to know because I lick my plate all the time. And I'm like, a good part of the goodness is there. And when you get a little bit in your beard, you can have it later on as well. Oh. <laughs> you are sick. I'm not sick, but I can eat an apple the right way. There they go. That. See, look. So there's my apple. I've gone from top to bottom yeah. and then I'll move it around Strong. and I'll go from top to bottom. Steve's got to go around and, the middle. And you didn't wipe it either before you ate it. It's come from the fridge. I washed them before I put it in the fridge. It come from the fridge. What do you mean? Wipe it. What? So, oh, you well, are They're covered your, in animal piss. You are sort. off your, but I washed them before I put them in the fridge. Right, you eat around the middle. Uh -huh. And when you join it on the other side and then you turn it and you, 
<laughs> and you end up with a proper See, I'm turning this off because you're talking nonsense. You're talking absolute nonsense. Goodbye. Right, right we got to pay for the cushions this coming month. In October. Yeah, so... Well, that's nothing to do with what we spent now, is it? Well, no, no, but it'll give me a good idea whether we can still got the money to pay for it. Yeah, well... Oh, look, I've not got a bloody window open. And the hatches, oh, come on. You've been up for 15 hours. Anyway, September's spenderoo, and you're deciding whether we can afford the cushions which we've already told them to do. Yeah, I could just do a bit more on my only fan scout. <laughs> Steve, you haven't done that eyebrow. You need to go and do it. It is that long. Look at. Yeah! Spend for September £721 and five pence. Well, that's good. Bought some petrol and we bought some diesel. We've done quite a bit of that. Ah, now we've had this conversation recently. You just think it is? No, no, no. I'll tell you what. You cut down on filling jugs to fill, sorry, containers to fill containers to fill containers. <laughs> yeah, you cut down on that and we won't spend as much because we'll just use what we need and then replenish what we need, not what we need to fill that jug and that jug and that jug and that jug. Anyway, you're going off subject. We spent £23 on petrol, £50 on diesel. We spent £441 on food. So food is by far the biggest, but we are using a lot of our long-term storage stuff. Yeah. We bought the tripod from Treasure Trove. Oh yeah, this thing here. Treasure yeah. Trove at Woburn is like a second-hand chandlery place yeah, it's great and we're place. walking around and they had a camera tripod there selling and we paid 36 quid for it we ate out a couple of times because it was my birthday i bought some sealant from the chandlery and we got some gas from fast manicou we got them to fill up our british gas bottle which is 721 pounds and five pence for the month that's good so we can live to fight another day so as you can see, hurricane season in the Caribbean hasn't been too bad for us this year. We dashed down from Martinique to Grenada when Storm Brett was coming through. And for the whole summer, we've sailed around the Grenadian islands, which have been absolutely stunning. So far, and we've still got another couple of weeks to go, we've done 624 kilometers, that's 388 miles. So you can sail around the Caribbean during hurricane season, we did. Thanks for watching and an extra special thank you to our Patreon and Coffee supporters. If you've enjoyed our video and ever wondered about supporting us on Patreon, why not pop over to our Patreon page to find out all the extras you get for supporting us, the Cordelians. Have a lovely week everybody. Cheers. <laughs> what did you say? What did you just call me? No, what was the saying you just used that I've never heard of before? Not. I'm not as green as a cabbage looking. No! What then? You're not so green as your cabbage looking. There you go. So I look like a cabbage, but I'm not as green, so not as naive or silly as a cabbage, but I look like a cabbage. It's a compliment. That's, it's not a compliment. It's, That's not a compliment. And it's too far. Is it a compliment? Oh. God. Oh, here we go. No, no it's not a compliment, is it? I mean, how can that be a compliment? Look how hot I am. I'm absolutely dripping. I'm dripping. I'm wetter than an otter's pocket. Right. Oh, God, this is ridiculous. Right. I've got to make lunch yet. <laughs> no, I'm not putting the camera down there. No, it's... It, no, it's... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me move the bottle. <laughs> Steve, you haven't done that eyebrow. You need to go and do it. It is that long. Look at... Yeah. But haven't I not discussed this before? Uh, the older you get, you get hairs growing oh, from know. places that you didn't want them to grow. They don't grow so quick on the top of your head, but they come out your ears, they come out your nose, and your eyebrows turn into Dennis Healy. Nobody, now, there's a blast nobody, of yeah, so nobody Well, Google it. Them. Dennis Healy. Use the eyebrows. I don't know what else to say. Just enjoy it.